In this lecture, inshallah, we will talk about the epidemiology of specific MDRO outbreaks in hospital. These include MRSA, VRE, CRE, ESPL, MDR, MDR pseudomonas, MDR acinetobacter, and Clostridium difficile. Uh, we will start with the MRSA, and as you see in this uh, photos, it is gram-positive cocci that cause several types of infections, uh, including skin infection and abscesses, and this is one of the uh, common uh, clinical pictures of the disease. For the organism, you have MRSA and MSSA. Uh, we're, we're talking about MRSA, but uh, we just give you the name of MSSA to know it is the opposite. So if you have 100 cases of Staph aureus and 30, 30 of them is MRSA, so we know by default that uh, uh, 70 are MSSA. If it is uh, 40 MRSA, it is 60 MSSA. So MSSA is the opposite, opposite of MRSA. MRSA, uh, it is the abbreviation of mesicillin resistant staph aureus. And as you see, uh, they, any staph aureus that is resistant of one of these three drugs, oxacillin, cefoxetine, or mesicillin, will be considered MRSA. If they are sensitive to these drugs, uh, then they are MSSA. Uh, and for the burden, 5% of the patient carry the MRSA in their nose or other uh, body parts as colonization, and they can transmit it to other patient or uh, they become infected rather than colonized. Uh, up to 9% of HAI, all HAI in the hospital are caused by MRSA. So MRSA is a very common cause of uh, HAI. Uh, 25 to 50%, according to the country, of staph aureus are MRSA. So in Saudi Arabia, we did the studies before, it's between 25 and 30, in US between 45 and 50. So it, it is different from country to country. For the risk factors for um, uh, MRSA, we have risk factors in the hospital and risk factors in the community. In the hospital, you will uh, notice that uh, these risk factors are repeated uh, in several uh, MDROs, including MRSA, uh, VRE, and CRE. Uh, these include uh, frequent uh, prolonged hospitalization, people with the indwelling central line, urinary catheter implant processes, and the drain, immunocompromised patients, surgical patient, diabetic patient, use of certain antimicrobial like quinolone antibiotics, uh, elderly patient nursing home and long-term care. For the risk factors in the community, uh, it includes uh, people who are frequently in crowded places where skin-to-skin -skin contact uh, happen. This can be seen in certain sports, which include skin-to-skin -skin contacts and some touch and abrasions. Uh, also intravenous drug users and homosexuals uh, due to skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact and prisoners' military personnel. MRSA is a very known cause uh, for hospital outbreaks. For the signs and symptoms of uh, MRSA, uh, there is no specific signs and symptoms, and it, it depends on uh, where infection happened. Uh, so if infection happen in the blood, you will get bloodstream infection. If infection happen in the lung, you get pneumonia and so on. So the most common infections caused by MRSA include bloodstream infection, pneumonia, surgical site infection, sepsis, and death. And each one of these has its own um, uh, clinical picture. For example, a skin infection, you will have a swelling, uh, uh, warmth, redness, pain at the site of uh, uh, infection or the site of abscess. If you, if the patient has bloodstream infection, you will have uh, fever, shivering, uh, and hypotension. For the diagnosis, it's positive culture for MRSA, uh, BCR diagnosis, and rapid latex agglutination test. Uh, transmission is usually uh, a direct contact with contaminated hands, especially when the healthcare worker does not do uh, appropriate hand hygiene, direct contact with colonized uh, patients who usually have 
the organism in their nose and can spread it to uh, roommates. Uh, in direct contact uh, after contamination of the surface and objects in the unit, uh, usually contaminated with MRSA. A screening of MRSA is very important to reduce the risk of exposure of other patients uh, in the same unit. And this is usually done by rapid test uh, and sensitivity, rapid culture and sensitivity testing, uh, and also molecular testing. Usually, the sample uh, taken from nerves, axilla, and groin. Uh, this is usually done for patients uh, transferred from another hospital, admitted to certain units like ICU or oncology unit, uh, patients who are known to be colonized with MRSA as flagged on the system, uh, patients who are scheduled for, for major surgery like cardiac surgery, patients on continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, and roommates of positive uh, cases, uh, not on a precaution for more than 72 hours. Uh, please know that uh, uh, screening of healthcare workers are not recommend, is not recommended unless healthcare workers are implicated uh, in the acquisition of FMRSA, uh, like an outbreak or others. For the prevention, we have to implement the core preventive uh, strategies uh, for uh, infection that are uh, transmitted uh, through contact transmission, either direct or indirect transmission. And these include hand hygiene, include contact precautions, uh, include dedicated patient care equipment, uh, like uh, 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 blood pressure cuffs or a steth a stethoscope, or sometimes we use single uh, use disposable items like thermometer. Uh, if common use of equipment is unavoidable, uh, then you need to clean it and disinfectant between patients, recognize previously colonized patient on the system by flagging so everybody on the uh, and the hospital can find out that this patient has MRSA and deal with accordingly, uh, provide education on management of MRSA to the healthcare workers. Uh, the next item implement the intervention to reduce device associated infection that is usually caused by, M uh, by MRSA. So we said that MRSA can cause clepsy, SSI, bacteremia. So there, there is preventive measures and bundles for this infection that can be implemented to reduce their uh, happening. Uh, also implement supplementary preventive uh, measures, including active surveillance and decolonization and chlorhexidine bath. Uh, decolonization of MRSA is done by intranasal antimicrobial called uh, mebrosim twice a day for uh, five days. Uh, usually, uh, we discontinue contact isolation for a patient who had MRSA if they have three negative, three consecutive negative culture taken three days apart. Uh, and uh, usually, uh, you need to consult the ICRHD outbreak coordinators uh, before doing that. The next uh, MDRO that we will talk today is uh, VRE. As you see, VRE stands for vancomycin resistant enterococci, which is Enterococcus fecalis, Enterococcus facem, and Enterococcus species, and specified that is resistant to vancomycin by a stand standard susceptibility testing method. Enterococci is uh, or enterococci are bacteria normally present in human intestine, uh, in, in the female genital tract, and also in the environment like soil and water. And it represents 3% of all HAI uh, and approximately 10 to 20% of enterococci uh, causing HAI or VRE. Um, The risk factors similar to MRSA, you will see the risk factors is prolonged uh, hospitalization, frequent hospitalization, patients with uh, devices, immunocompromised patient, diabetic patient, surgical patient, and patient who have been on certain antimicrobials here in VRE is vancomycin for long duration. 
Uh, VRE is a common cause of hospital outbreaks and the symptoms will depend on the site affected. As we said in MRSA, it can cause bloodstream infection, urinary tract infection, surgical site infection, dialysis bacteremia, and the signs and symptoms will depend on the type of infection. Diagnosis, positive culture with VRE, mode of transmission, usually indirect contact uh, by uh, touching surfaces and objects contaminated with VRE, or direct by healthcare workers who do not do hand hygiene, or direct contact with patients colonized with VRE, uh, but VRE is not spreading by air uh, or by coughing and sneezing. A screening usually done for patients who were previously VRE positive, uh, roommates exposed to VRE positive case. Screening is not done for healthcare workers, again, unless they are epidemiologically linked to a new acquisition of VRE. And usually the sites uh, screened for VRE include rectal swab and perineal swab. For the prevention, it is very similar to uh, MRSA. You promote hand hygiene, uh, especially after using bathroom. We said it is an intestinal organism. Before and after handling medical devices or carrying of wounds, before preparing food. Uh, implement contact precautions, use dedicated patient care equipment or single use disposable uh, items. Uh, if common use items is uh, uh, unavoidable, then you have to clean and disinfect. Recognize early cases colonized with VRE and flag on the system. Uh, also provide education for healthcare workers. And implement the preventive measures for the associated infections, including CLABSI, CAUTI, SSI, bacteremia, and dialysis patients. Uh, there is no decolonization for decolonization for VRE, and we can discontinue contact isolation uh, after three consecutive negative culture taken three days apart. Uh, the next MDRO is CRE, uh, carbapenem resistant enterococci. Uh, and CRE is any uh, E. coli, Klebsiella uh, oxytoca, Klebsiella pneumonia, or enterobacter species testing uh, resistant uh, to imibenem, merobenem, doribenem, or artabenem by standard susceptibility testing methods. This is the definition uh, of uh, MDRO, and sometimes by production of a carbaminase uh, demonstrated using certain recognized tests like PCR or modified Hodge test. Uh, enterobacteria are a large family uh, of uh, gram-negative bacteria, including Klebsiella, E. coli, Enterobacter, Citrobacter, Salmonella, Shigella, Proteus, Serratia, and other species. These uh, pathogens are present in the human intestine. Uh, 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 that's why it's called Enterobacteria, uh, and are normal part of the gut flora. Uh, they are endemic in many parts of the world. Approximately 5% of enterobacteria causing HAI are CRE, and approximately 30% of CRE produce carbaminase, uh, which is an enzyme that breaks down the carbapenem that causing resistance to carbapenem uh, drugs. Uh, why uh, CRE is considered epidemiologically important uh, MDRO? Because it's often resistant to multiple antimicrobial. It often causes uh, infection that has high mortality. Uh, it is uh, can, can, uh, CRE producing carbaminase can transmit uh, transmitted from enterobacteria to other germs, causing other organisms to be resistant to carbapenem. Uh, although CRE is currently primary associated with inpatient care uh, setting, they have been noticing uh, its spread in the community as well. Risk factors in the hospital, uh, again, similar to VRE, uh, frequent prolonged hospitalization, people with devices, people who have been previously treated with certain antimicrobials here in CRE, it is carbapenem, cephalosporins, fluoroconeurons, and vancomycin for a long time, immunocompromised patients and uh, uh, older age patients. 
Um, it's a common cause also of hospital outbreaks. Signs and symptoms will depend on the body part affected by CRE. Common infection include urinary tract infection, bloodstream infection, uh, ventilator-associated pneumonia, interabdominal abscess, surgical site infection, dialysis, bacteremia. Uh, diagnosis usually by culture for, for CRE. There is also phenotypic diagnosis. Um, there is disc diffusion or automated susceptibility testing, and this is done to um, identify carbapenem resistant phenotype. Uh, there is also molecular identification uh, when you're looking for uh, carbaminase uh, producing uh, CRE. The uh, mode of transmission is similar to other MDRO, either by indirect contact with contaminated surfaces and objects, and here. Uh, since it's an intestinal organism, it can be seen on toilets and uh, uh, bathrooms. Um, there is also direct contact with uh, healthcare workers who do not do hand hygiene or uh, other patients who are uh, having CRE. Uh, there is a screening for uh, CRE, usually done for roommates exposed to CRE, and there is active screening also for admission to certain units, not, not every unit in the hospital, but some units like ICU can uh, decide to screen everybody for CRE. Uh, and uh, CRE uh, screening is not recommended again uh, for uh, healthcare workers unless they're epidemiologically linked to new acquisition. The specimen used for CRE uh, screening is a stool specimen and rectal swab. And in some times, uh, they use urine, stoma swab, wounds, and catheter exit site. Prevention and control of CRE is very similar to VRE and uh, MRSA. It includes promoting hand hygiene, especially after using the bathroom, as we said, it's intestinal organism, and also before and after handling medical devices or caring for wounds uh, before preparing uh, food. Uh, also implementing contact uh, precautions. Uh, as VRE also, um, whenever the patient uh, 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 is using equipment should be patient specific or, uh, or whenever can be single use uh, would be better. Uh, if the common use equipment is unavoidable, then we have to clean and disinfect between patients. Uh, recognize previously colonized patients by on system by flagging, uh, providing education for healthcare workers, uh, prescribing and using antimicrobial antimicrobials appropriately, uh, discontinue device whenever uh, uh, possible. As we said also in um, MRSA and VRE, uh, infection caused by CRE can be prevented by their uh, bundles and preventive strategy, including CAUT, CLAPSI, VAB, bacteremia, and SSI. There is no decolonization for CRE, also VRE, only for MRSA so far we took. Uh, we should continue uh, uh, contact isolation for the whole uh, duration of hospitalization uh, in acute care uh, setting. Uh, and only discontinue after uh, consultation with ICB uh, and uh, ICRHD uh, coordinator. The next MDRO is ESPL. ESPL um, are enzymes uh, that confer resistance to most beta lactam antibiotics. So they destroy the beta-lactam antibiotics, and these include penicillins, cephalosporins, and monobactam uh, astronam. Uh, they are present in several types of uh, uh, pathogens, including enterobacteria, especially E. coli and Klebsiella, as well as other gram-negative, including uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Uh, the burden is very high. Actually, it's between 15 to 30 percent of enterobacteria are ESPL. For the risk factors for ESPL, uh, risk factors in hospital setting, 
patient who have been treated with uh, broad spectrum antimicrobial, especially third generation cephalosporins, pluriquinolones, vancomycin, and quinolones. Uh, frequent and prolonged hospitalization, ICU admission, uh, people with devices, uh, people with multiple comorbidity, old age. And, and these risk factors are basically repeated in most of the MDRO. Risk factors in the community, especially those who have history of, uh, of repeated UTIs, uh, urinary tract infection, and prior antibiotic exposure in the community, similar to the same antibiotics we described in the hospital. They can cause hospital outbreaks, and the symptoms will depend on the body site affected, especially uh, can cause urinary tract infection, the most common, uh, abdominal infection, diarrhea, wound infection, bloodstream infection, ventilator-associated pneumonia. Diagnosis by positive culture. Uh, we can also use phenotypic diagnosis, which is required to identify bacteria and disc diffusion or automated susceptibility testing to know the resistance uh, and meet the definition. A second confirmatory test can be done also. A mode of transmission is uh, either direct or indirect contact. The direct contact uh, is by uh, the hands of uh, healthy care workers who do not do appropriate hand hygiene, and the indirect by touching contaminated surfaces and objects. A screening done for roommates uh, exposed to SPL positive patients and active screening done in certain units like ICU, burns, oncology, hematology units, hemodialysis unit, organ transplant unit. The screening is not done for healthcare workers, as we said before. The specimen used to detect or screen for ASBL is a stool sample and rectal sample and sometimes urine sample. The preventive measures for ESPL is similar to those for all MDRO and contact uh, transmission, and this including promoting hand hygiene, especially after using bathroom, before and after handling medical devices or caring for patients once, uh, during contact isolation, uh, whenever possible, we place the patient in single room uh, with private bathroom, uh, and dedicated uh, non-critical uh, uh, equipment. If common use equipment is unavoidable, then you have to clean and disinfect between uh, patients, recognize previously, colonize patients on the system by flagging, providing education for healthcare workers, prescribing and using antimicrobial appropriately, especially broad spectrum beta lactam, discontinue devices like urinary catheter as soon as no longer necessary because uh, having urinary catheter is one of the major factors for urinary tract infection caused by ESPL. And also the preventive measures for other infection caused by ESPL, including UTI, SSI, uh, CLAPSI, and VAB, using the preventive measures and bundles used for these types of infections. There is no decolonization for ESBL. Uh, for discontinuing contact isolation, we should continue uh, contact isolation for the whole hospitalization. Uh, you can discontinue after consultation with the infection control. Thanks.